Hello everyone, it's your buddy Chris. Today I want to talk about getting access to the internet while you're out at sea. It's not going to be the same as when you're at home, that is for sure. It can be very expensive, but there is a way, there's actually two ways, to get free internet. Stay tuned. <laughs> For many people, getting on a cruise ship is a way to get away from everything. No more worrying about all that work piling up on your desk. No need to worry about what's going on with your friends and family on Facebook. Get away from it all, relax, and enjoy your downtime. But the internet has become a huge part of our lives, and letting go of that connection can be hard. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about everything you need to do to get internet, what you can expect, how much it's gonna cost, and how you can conserve your internet while you're out at sea. So if you're old enough to remember a 56K modem connection, don't worry, it's not that slow, but it's pretty close. Your home internet, you're probably used to getting something like maybe 20 to 50 megabits per second of download speed and somewhere around 10 to 15 megabits of upload speed. Internet is always divided between download and upload. Download is download. It's everything you're getting from the internet. Upload is everything you're pushing up to the internet, like photos and videos from your trip. What you're going to get is an internet connection that is going to be somewhere around five megabits of download speed and one megabit per second of upload. The reason for this is the technology that's used on cruise ships. When you're connecting to the internet on a cruise ship, you are connecting to a satellite that is sitting in a geosynchronous orbit 21,000 miles above the earth. So not only is it more difficult to put out a lot of bandwidth, it's got a lot of what is called latency. It takes time for that data to travel up 21,000 miles to the satellite. Then it shoots down 21,000 miles to a land-based receiver where it connects to a DNS server. DNS is the whole internet. That's what translates IP addresses to websites. So if you're trying to get to Facebook, you're gonna go 21,000 miles up, Ask for Facebook, 21,000 miles down to a DNS server. DNS server is gonna send you to Facebook and it's gonna then take what you've requested, send it back up again 21,000 miles and back down 21,000 miles. So be prepared for slow speeds, particularly depending on the time of day. If it's, you know, if it's in the evening when everyone is getting ready for sleep and everyone is now looking at the internet, seeing what's going on, uploading some pictures, it's going to be very slow. If you wake up early while everyone's asleep, your speeds might be a little bit better. Now, I want to talk about the difference between Wi-Fi and internet. Some people confuse the terms, but they are very different. On a Disney cruise ship, Wi-Fi is included, but Wi-Fi is simply the network of the ship. Think of it at your office. If you connect to a server, maybe it contains all your Word documents stored in a closet somewhere down the hall. That's your internal network. And on a cruise ship, Wi-Fi connects you through your Disney Navigator application to that internal network. You get access to the internet via Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi is not internet. I hope I didn't confuse it too much. All Wi-Fi is free, and the way to get connected to Wi-Fi on all the Disney cruise ships is through the Disney Navigator application. Before you get on the ship, make sure you and everyone who wants access has downloaded that application. If you're using a Apple device, 
go to the app store look for disney navigator or disney cruise ship navigator application and download it to your device if you're on a windows laptop just do a google search for disney navigator application and you will find a version for whatever version of windows you're using from windows 8 all the way to windows 11. same with a macbook make sure you download it from the app store same with an ipad if you want to get it on your ipad again go to the app store and if you're on a macbook app store once again google play will have it for all your android devices the app takes up about 200 megabits so that's why it's so important to download it ahead of time with all the covid restrictions things have changed a little bit disney is relying on you to have that app even more than ever all right, before your cruise, once you've downloaded the app, you've entered in your reservation number, your name, and you're logged in, all the basic stuff that you'll do with pretty much any type of uh, account on the internet, it will begin to give you some basic information, but not a lot. It'll give you a very fun countdown of how many days until your cruise, and it'll tell you how much you've put down and the date when you're going to make your final payment. Now, once your final payment's made, and depending on what level of cruiser you are, based on your Castaway Club membership, you can then, and only then, an example of as a silver Castaway Club member, at the 90-day mark, you can begin booking your onboard and port adventures through the app. It'll give you every day of the cruise starting from the day you leave until you the day you arrive and within each category you'll be able to see what is available now some things book up much quicker than others i've never been able to get a tequila tasting that sells out super fast that's okay i got lots of tequila you can see right over there if you want to book things get on that app right away and start making your bookings things like Dinner at Paulo or Remy, if you're on the Dream or the Fantasy, you can book through that application. If you want to book spa activities, they're all there. You can also book your little prince or princess into the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boop Boutique for a full on prince or princess makeover. They used to have Pirates League as well, which I don't think they're operating right now due to COVID, but you used to be able to get a pirate makeover. You can book the very well-known and much loved Royal Court Royal Tea. This is a tea with all the princesses who will come around, get little gifts. It's not cheap, but it's one of those super memorable experiences. If that's something your little prince or princesses would love, definitely book it. Heck, you could even try to combine it with a booking at Bibbidi Boppity Boo so your prince or princess is completely made over super princessy or princey for that tea. There are photo packages that you can book and there is a discount if you book those photo packages in advance. Again, through the Navigator application, you can book it. You can book a private studio with a photographer if you want to get some amazing family portraits done. There are roaming photographers throughout the ship. So if you want to book, um, if you want to get some pictures as your Little one is getting is hanging out with one of the princesses. The photographer will take the picture, and those will all be included at the end of your cruise. And there's lots of options. You can get a fully printed out book. You can just get a group of photos uh, printed, or you can just get a download where they'll give you a code. You'll download them all at the end of your cruise, and you can do whatever you want with them. But the only time to get a discount is if you do that ahead of time. There are a lot of adult experiences that you can book as well. Things like cognac and whiskey tasting, champagne, wine, and even a mixology course. It's a lot of fun. All of them are great. They're actually a very good deal for the amount of uh, alcohol you get to taste, the things you get to learn, a lot of little trivia, things like that. There are the sports simulators and golf simulators. Those I've never done. I'm not. It's not really my thing, but if you want to... Uh, just go and pretend that you're playing soccer or golfing. There's a whole setup for that. 
A lot of people love it. They sell out very quick. So that's another thing that you can book. So before COVID became a thing, Disney would include in your room every day a Disney Cruise Navigator flyer. Here, let, let me show you. So when I talk about the Disney Cruise Navigator before COVID, this is what it looked like. So you'll get, get these sheets of paper every day. It's going to give you some information about um, when you have to uh, leave the ship, how to pick up your luggage. But really, here is a typical day at sea. You can see it's sort of broken down like a TV guide. Here you can see uh, things broken down. So this was Thursday and in the morning on Funnel Vision between 8.30 and uh, 9.30, we got Bambi. And uh, then there's a little break. And then at 10 a.m. all the way to 11.15, we got Princess and the Frog. So it's a very useful tool, but this has all changed because they're they no longer giving this out. You have to use your Disney Navigator application. That will show you the same information that you used to get on paper, but now you're going to get it on your phone. So once again, really important that you download that app. It's going to really tell you everything that's going on on the ship. That only works once you're on board and you will actually tell the app you're on board, connected to the Disney wireless network, and it comes to life. Mirrors at sea. We were really lucky and happened to be on board when Avengers Endgame was released. Now, be prepared. If you want to be one of the very first people to see these movies, they premiere at 12.01 a.m. And uh, Avengers Endgame was a three-hour movie. Ah, <sighs> yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just saying there are so many things, and I'm not going to get into every one of them in this particular video. I just wanted you to understand that you need to to have that application installed. You want to figure out what's going on every day. You don't need to, you can just wander around and bump into the adventures. Um, I like to know what's going on so I can choose properly and plan my day. What does all of this have to do with internet? Well, technically nothing because everything I'm talking about is Wi-Fi related. But again, to get access to the internet and particularly to get access to the free internet, here is what you need to do on your first day before midnight through the Disney Cruise Line Navigator application. There is a option to sign up for a free 50 megabits of data. This is only available on the first day. As soon as it's 1201, that deal is over. You're going to be paying if you want Internet. 50 megabits sounds like it's not very much, and yeah, it's not. It's not very much at all. If you are very, very careful, you should be able to maybe view and respond to maybe 20 emails. It depends on if there's attachments. A big attachment could eat up all that 50 megabits really quickly. Don't even think about uploading a video. Don't do it. Your 50 megabits will be gone like that. Um, but you could uh, kind of look at Facebook a little bit. You could upload a couple pictures to Instagram. But you need to be very, very careful. And if you want to really make sure that you conserve your data, you're going to have to make some changes to your device. There are four internet packages that are available. They go from pay-as-you-go, works out to $0.25 cents per megabyte. The most expensive option but if you only need to check a couple of emails that might be the way to go there's the small package that's a hundred megabits cost nineteen dollars us that works out to 19 cents per megabyte maybe good for just posting a few pictures checking email but not doing very much then there's the medium package 300 megabits of data that works out to 13 cents per megabyte and also that one be okay if you 
just want to post a few pictures, stay in touch with people, just a very light, moderate use. And then there's the large package. It's the most cost effective plan if you're going to be using a lot of data. That works out to only nine cents per megabyte. It is 89 US dollars for one gigabyte or 1000 megabytes of data. Now, <laughs> try not to do what I did. And a lot of people do, which is just act like you're at home. You can't do that. You've got to go into your device and you've got to make some changes. You would be shocked how much data your phone is using all the time. And if you don't turn off background app refreshing, you're going to use up all your data in a day. And that's what happened to me. I missed one of my devices that I connected with. I think it was my iPad and it was doing all its normal things. Oh, you've taken a whole bunch of pictures. I'm going to upload those to your iCloud. Um, it's going to be keeping all of your apps up to date. It's going to keep sucking down all the emails. So here's what you got to do. Go, and I'm going to do this with an iPhone. That's what I have. It's a very similar process if you are using uh, an Android device, but let's just go through it on an iPhone. Now, you don't need to do this as soon as you get on the ship. While you're in port, you can continue to connect to the local cell towers, just use your normal data. But as soon as you hear that big, beautiful horn blowing and the ship starts sailing away, you better get on your device and uh, make some changes. Go into your settings, then scroll down to general. Once you're in general, you're gonna scroll down to background app refresh, and you're gonna turn it off. And what that's going to do is just leave your phone locked in whatever's on it right now. It's not going to keep updating any information. You're going to go back into your phone and you're going to put it into airplane mode. That's going to turn off your external data, but leave your Wi-Fi on because that's what you're going to use for your Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. And that app not only tells you everything that's going on, but allows you to stay in touch with other people in your party through a texting application. I've also heard that if you stay connected to the internal wireless network and you're using an iPhone and your friends and family are also using iPhones, you should be able to use the texting on your phone. I haven't tested this, but it's something that I've heard. It's just that the way Apple's proprietary messaging works doesn't use uh, it doesn't count against a text message it's apple messaging and uh, it should work um, if you've tried that and it works please leave a comment and i'd like to know that i can confirm that with everybody it's just a rumor right now but something to check out if you have your data turned off and it doesn't work it just won't work so it shouldn't cost you anything if you're not comfortable making those changes don't worry about it. On deck four, you'll find the connected C desk. Usually not um, all that busy, maybe in the first day or two, but if you want to be sure that your settings are all done, there are helpful cast members who will walk you through all of those steps, or you can just hand them your phone and they'll just turn everything off that needs to be turned off. That way you don't have to worry. The other thing you can do is make sure you log out of your internet connection through the Disney Cruise Line Navigator every night when you're done to make sure that it doesn't catch anything that you're not, you've missed in some way. Now make sure everybody you're sharing this with does the same thing. Now I was lucky. I went down the next day after I blew through a gigabit of data in one night, explained to them what happened and they took pity on me and they gave me a do over. If that happens to you and they give you a do-over, do not, I repeat, do not expect them to do it again. You'll get one if you're lucky, and after that, you're on your own. Now, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there is a way to get unlimited internet. It's not free. That's not the right term. The term should be included. If you happen to book into the most incredible, <laughs> amazing home at sea, and that is the Royal Suite on the Disney cruise ships. So on the Disney Fantasy, that's, uh, I think it's about a 1,750 square foot 
apartment, a giant deck, everything amazing, even a kitchen, two bathrooms. So if you can afford that incredible, incredible stateroom, internet is included and it is unlimited. So just a reminder, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you know someone who's going on a cruise that might enjoy this type of content, definitely share it with them. Hit that bell and that'll give you a notification every time I release a new video. And so you won't miss any of these tips and tricks. And if you have any questions whatsoever, I answer every question that's posted onto YouTube. If you take the time to write me, I'm going to take the time to write back. Thanks for watching everybody. And we'll see you next time from the Holy Moly.